So this morning we want to talk to you about how great onboarding um, can transform your candidate engagement strategy. But first of all, I'd like to ask you all of your questions, so please raise your hands. Um, I will not be picking someone out of the crowd, I promise. Um, how many of you or your companies have invested in attracting and assessing uh, your new trainers, your early career new trainers in the last 12 months? Great, so 80% about most of you, um, fantastic. Um, and now how many of you have an agreed budget this year uh, to invest into an onboarding pro uh, program? Okay, so quite a few as well, not, not as much, not as many. Um, so basically, um, we're quite interested, we find it really interesting that a lot of companies invest in employer brand and assessing and attracting their candidates, but sometimes at the point of offer, this investment can tail off. Um, and in fact, in recent research from the Work Institute, um, it was found out that about only one in four companies actually um, have, have said that they've got a formal onboarding program. Um, but before I get into that, um, just a brief word about us. So C3, we are a creative uh, comms agency, and we focus in three key areas. The first one is uh, employer branding and talent acquisition. The second is uh, onboarding, and the third one is internal employee uh, engagement. So myself and Tim, Tim who should be on stage with me right now, uh, we're here all day, so do please come to us, uh, talk to us today. And if not, well, we've got sweets and also come anyway. <laughs> so um, we, believe, uh, in, we believe that uh, developing an exceptional experience for your new joiners um, at offer will create a sense of belonging which is a key basic need for all of us. We all want to have, we all want to belong and, and have the sense of belonging to an organization or to a country. That, that's sort of a key basic need that we all have within us. Um, and in fact, a recent research from EY demonstrates that people who are more, um, people are more motivated, more um, engaged at work and more productive if they have a sense of belonging. So. It makes sense to us that what better time to uh, create that sense of belonging than when onboarding starts at offer and acceptance. Because by accepting a job within your organization, your early career cohorts now have a vested interest in the success of your organization. So the job from here is really to develop that commitment further and not lose it along the way, obviously. Um, so now for your early careers, um, the transition between education and work is a critical period for them. So how do, do we support, how do organizations support their early careers um, through that? Well, we believe that there are three key areas um, that you should be focusing on. The first one is uh, building engagement and excitement. Um, through news stories, through building connections and relationships within the organization. Um, the second one is to focus on uh, workplace skills, um, development, and really making it relevant to them. And the third one is um, supporting them through their life transition. Um, so why do we do this? Why is it all worth it? Um, so I'm conscious you may not be able to see this really well, but. Um, You'll be able to access the slides later on, or you can take a picture now if you'd like. Um, those stats actually, just as I said previously with the EY research, they just really underline the fact that um, delivering an exceptional on board, uh, exceptional experience to your new joiners um, actually will support improvements in productivity and levels of engagement. And now I'm just going to pass over to Jenny, who's going to talk to you about the RBS experience. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, hi, my name is Jenny Steele. I work in the attraction and recruitment team at RBS, um, and we recruit um, probably about 500 interns and grads um, each year. So, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our story and the help that we've had from Anne and the team at CA3. So, I'm pretty sure if I asked all of you in the room, you'd all say, yep, candidate experience is absolutely what we do. And that is absolutely true of everybody at RBS as well. Um, in fact, if you speak to any member of the team, they'll tell you how seriously we take it from the first interaction that we have out on campus, through our selection process, 
and, and on our digital channels as well, which are always full of content to either attract or stimulate the conversation between um, people that haven't heard of our RBS brand before. Um, we've had an uplift of over 20% in applications this year, um, currently at a whopping 35,000. So we've got a lot of interactions and we need to impress at every point. We've really simplified our process and added some helpful information to our website, which is jobs.rbs.com, if anybody wants to have a squiz, um, so that you can see the expectations that we set um, and try and help people understand and manage the expectations right from the get-go. I guess what candidates want from us is always changing, so we need to make sure that we're evolving too. With candidates having even more choice and campuses getting ever busier with recruiters vying for the best graduates, how do we keep our candidates engaged once we have got them through our selection process? And that's really important for us. And also we have a big challenge on our hands because a lot of the programmes that we recruit into are out with London, which is pretty much where every graduate I speak to seems to want to go. Um, so for us, that means we have to provide opportunities for our incoming interns and grads to interact with us. Um, the work and the people before they join and make sure that our new colleagues are engaged from the moment they accept a job offer so they can hit the ground running when they join us. We want them to feel like they're part of the family well before day one and that sense of community we feel is really crucial. So as I said, what do we do? Well, we keep candidates informed throughout the selection process. We know our grads and interns want feedback as quickly as we can and on the whole we'll provide feedback within 40 hours. We issue our contracts and call candidates to check they've received them um, and to answer any questions. Um, and this year we've moved to doing that online so that candidates can simply um, accept the offer without that challenge of a paper-based um, contract being sent out to your term time address or your home address or getting lost. Um, and that's really important for us. It also helps us through that pre-employment screening process too. We also invite our new grads um, to social events before they start. Um, and we have a kind of, I guess, employee-led network, if you like. We have graduate council that supports us with our engagement. So actually, our incoming grads and interns are currently speaking to our cohort already. Um, and they are the guys that organize the events and publish the newsletters. But I am here to talk a little bit about the technology that we use as well. And we give our interns and grads access to our onboarding portal which tells them a lot of information that they need to know. And there is some kind of basic stuff around travel and accommodation as we get closer to induction, but we've really developed that over the last few years of working with CA3 and using some of their ideas and our ideas combined to make it an even better and stronger tool that will really help us keep those candidates engaged. The portal, as I said, allows us to communicate um, with all our grads and interns at the same time and reduces the volume of admin. And again, if I'm speaking to anybody who does similar jobs to um, me or my team, you will know they're just the volume of queries that you can get in. That's a massive time saver for us. And it also minimizes the risk of any of our, our candidates not getting the information or our grads and interns getting the information. We've got some really helpful checklists on there that um, provide the information that people need when they need it. Um, so they're not, again, having to answer queries or look for emails that might go into spam mailboxes. And having everything in that one place helps keep, I guess, um, folk engaged with our brand and who RBS are because they can see all that information. What else have we got on there? Um, I guess we've got loads of information about the programmes, the business areas that they're joining, um, and there's a network as well established so that they can find out who's joining at the same time. Two of the biggest improvements that we've made just in the last 12 months have been the um, start of the use of our social wall. Um, and also we used a kind of grad takeover session. So again, our current cohorts were online at a specific, specific time that could answer real time questions. And that went down really well this year. Graduates used that social wall. We were a bit worried about what they might post, if I'm honest with you, but um, they've self-regulated and we've not had to go in and delete any of the posts. Um, and they really use that really well to network with each other in the programmes and also for locations. So we'll recruit into our hubs in Edinburgh, London, Manchester, Birmingham, Bristol and Belfast and Dublin. So it really, really helps pull together that sense of connection. Um, and as I said, the grad, the grad takeover went really well. I was actually at an ISE event the other week and speaking to students and they were like, we just were fed up talking to bots. We want to talk to people. We want to have those personal connections. And that tool really allowed us to, to do that really well. And we'd like to do more of that this year when we, we open up in the next actual week, I think. 
So the portal, as I said, is a perfect way to keep the communication going between us and our new colleagues during the months between offer and start. Um, again, just to give you another snapshot of what the portal includes, it's got welcome videos, it's got links to our social media channels, um, it's got business specific information that the grads seem to thrive on knowing before they start, so even down to structure charts. Contact details about their line managers and buddies um, and when they'll be in touch and location specific information, which is really crucial if you're moving to a new city. And as I said, as we approach kind of induction agendas and um, there'll be information about travel arrangements um, and practical stuff people need to know as well. Grads and interns can also update information on their own profiles, um, just as they would on other social media, and they can post pictures um, so that people can actually find out a little bit about who they are as well. And we've already started um, populating the portal with information about the programme team, who they'll meet and um, interact with once they join. We're building more video content because, again, all the research and all the feedback that we get is that people want to see more videos. Um, so we've got some short um, snapshot videos that we use internally um, and that people can find out a little bit more about RBS. The idea being that if we can personalise the content and build authentic engagement, then we really develop that psychological contract um, and not just the legally binding contracts. I knew I'd forget to flick through the slides, but this is more or less everything that I've said. So lastly, I just wanted to tell you about um, kind of a new development for this year, which kind of touches on what Anne mentioned around the development piece. We want our grads and interns to know that development is key to us and to their I guess what they'll get from us at RBS and that that starts even before day one. So we're going to help them by building in some bite-sized learning sessions so that they can dip into really practical stuff that we know that they'll benefit from but they can do it when they want. Um, so the content will include things like presentation skills, networking, influencing but there'll also be some stuff in there around um, general well-being um, and mindfulness, which is actually something that RBS takes um, pretty seriously with our Great Place to Work programme. We're also going to build on the pre-work that they're asked to do before they join us. So for our grads, we'll wait until they've finished their exams, we don't want to add any more pressure, but we do get them to do a little bit of pre-work before they come to their induction, so they know that actually, again, this is a job and they're investing their time in it. Again, we feel that if they're investing in us up front, they're, they're less likely to walk away from us. So I guess that um, slide there kind of shows you a little bit about some of the information that we've got on there. And as you can see, is all branded um, to RBS. Um, and we've done a huge amount of work actually just on tone of voice. So again, people get a sense of who we are. Um, and again, just some final examples of some of the infographics that we'll have up there. Um, picture of my boss, Sandra Beatty, who is the head of early career and her welcome video. And as I say, some information around the structure charts and program snapshots. So thank you for our time. I hope that um, between Anne and myself, you've got a flavour of um, how important, I guess, onboarding is, what we've done at RBS, um, which hopefully brings it to life. And um, Anne and I are really happy to answer any questions just now. <laughs>